Yo, 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 it is your boy, Adam Co. It is August 9th, it's Sunday. It is a beautiful day. It's even better because the Giants got a win last night. Probably the most nervous I've been all year as a Giants fan, uh, especially at the end of the game. It wasn't nervous in the middle, and then right at the end, we we, <laughs> we almost lost. So we'll get into that. But man, we teed off on Kershaw a little bit. So many years. I think he's had about 50 starts against the Giants in his career, and this is probably the most we've ever hit him in one start. We took him out, and uh, he looked frustrated. You could see it. That was like the playoff Kershaw. He was very, very frustrated. We have a lot to talk about today. Uh, we'll get started with Slater, man. Come on. I talked about it yesterday. This guy does not deserve to be out of the lineup anymore, and I love to see. I'll talk about the lineup for today, but he's in there. Bad in eighth. That's fine. If he's not in the leadoff, that's fine. He's going against a tough pitcher, Walker Buehler, a right-handed pitcher. Put him in the eighth spot. His speed, his power, his defense, everything. He's a major league baseball player right now. Um, he's put everything together. He's had a couple, you know, rough years, but he's playing well. We gotta keep him in that lineup. And he just, dude, two, two home runs to center field. That's where his his power is, right center. We've seen that. Um, and he hit he hit two of them against Kershaw. And he even his out is out to start the game was so it was hard. So, um, man. Slater made us all proud yesterday. Yaz with the home run. Solano three for five. Longo two for four. The rest of the lineup needs to step it up a little bit. Our first four or five guys are doing well. Wilmer doing doing well, getting hits. And then we have Pence over. Ruff over. Trump over. Dubon over. That we got we got a little more consistency throughout the lineup, and I think that's a good spot to have uh, Slater in there today at eight, because so he could kind of give us a little more depth at the bottom of the lineup. Cueto pitched. I mean, you can't pitch any better than he did. He was he was really spotting his stuff up last night. Uh, he had the ball on a string. I mean, he, he was just hitting his spots. He had good tempo. Didn't give up a hit, obviously, uh, until that the play. And I mean, I'll, I'll get into it real quick. There was a lot of hate on me last night for on Twitter because I said, man. There were everybody, obviously, right when Cueto gives it the home run, the three-run home run, his first legit hit off of him. The only other hit was the the triple from Kike Hernandez, which was a can of corn to left field that Pence misplayed. And I'm not going to hate on Pence. A lot of people were hating on Pence. I mean, if you can't see the ball, you can't see the ball. It's not like he's not trying. You just didn't see it. It's a tough sky, and it happens. It just happened at the worst time, and it's probably the worst way to ruin a no-hitter in the history of, of, of baseball besides probably Colorado, Colorado and uh, Detroit with the missed call at first base. Anyways, um, yeah, I mean, what is Kapler supposed to do? He goes out there, checks on, checks on his guy to see if he's healthy. He had a little, we now know that it was a blister on his, on his foot. And he says he, he has a couple of pitches and he says, I'm fine. I want it. I want this guy. I want Turner. This is my game. As a manager, you're not going to take him out there. That's how you earn trust from your players. That's how you, you know, just become a better manager. You trust your guys. And a lot of guys on Twitter and Facebook, I see, are, we have to take them out. If Tony Watson would have came in and gave up a three-run home run, everybody would have said, why would you take out Cueto? He, he didn't give up a legit hit. You can't take out Cueto there. You can't win. Okay, Kapler can't win. And that's one one problem of being a manager in, in the major leagues. You're, whatever you do, you're going to get um, – People are going to say something about it. So I don't have any anything wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Keep keep your guy in. Keep your ace in the game. He gets out of that. He gets a, you know he strikes out Turner. Boom. Not, no one talks about it. But he, the fact that he missed one location and he hits a three run home run, we're all talking about it. You're not going to bring in Watson there. I don't care if Turner had the, the you know so much ownage on Cueto. It doesn't matter. He's pitching well all game. People were saying that people were saying that he missed his spot. He hasn't given but a legit hit yet. He's a right-handed pitcher against a right-handed a guy that he made strike uh, ground out twice. Turner grounded out twice in the game already. Cueto was doing well. I mean, I have nothing wrong with that. We'll move on from that because we still got the win. No matter what, we got the win. Rogers pitched two innings. I usually like I, I say before. I don't like having Rogers pitch two innings, but he pitched great. You you couldn't take him out there. The guy that they were not hitting, there was no good contact against him last night, and that was amazing. He pitched well. Trevor Gott came in, closed it down. Uh, man, our bullpen, our, our last three or four guys in the bullpen are really good. we got to just have more, a little more consistency. 
Um, and, uh, yeah, great game. Solano, stay hot, man. Stay hot, Donovan Solano. That's all I got about last night's game. Great win. Uh, and Walker Buehler tonight against Kevin Gosman. Okay, big start for Gosman. Uh, lineup, we got, I'll just say it out real quick. We got Yaz, Dickerson, Solano, Belt, Longo, Pablo, and the DH, Crawford, Slater, Heineman. Okay, not our ideal lineup, but against a tough right-handed pitcher, you can't throw those other guys out there. Um, you can't throw Tromp in there. A catcher, you got to put our lefty, Heineman. Uh, Crawford's going to be in there instead of Dubon. And I think that's my player of the game today is Crawford. Uh, I think he's going to have a big game. Uh, have a couple RBIs and a big hit. That's what we need. We need a big hit at the bottom of the lineup. We get all these guys on base, and then our bottom of the lineup doesn't doesn't uh, fall through. So Crawford's my player of the game against Walker Bueller. Um, and, yeah, so Slater, Slater's in the lap. Love that. One thing I was going to talk about from yesterday is uh, we, we don't bunt a lot. Uh, we, you know, baseball's kind of changed, and it's all about home runs and extra base hits. But, I mean, Chadwick Trump was up first and second. We didn't bunt. He grounds out, and the guys it, it ended up being just like a bunt. But I feel like in that situation, first and second, you got to put that bunt down. With no outs, first and second, no outs, we got to bunt a little more. Uh, but that's that's how baseball is. I'm not going to say anything about that. I just want to point that out. My brother David Cosina, one of the best uh, baseball minds I know. Uh, he's an A's fan. A's are doing really well. But he, he, he texted me as well last night. And he said, what do you think about a trade? He said he had a couple of trade uh, scenarios. One was to the White Sox um, because the White Sox are trying to win right now. And that's a good point. Uh and we ended up doing a trade today. I'll talk about that in a second. But he, he was thinking about maybe trading Cueto and Wilmer Flores, uh, maybe Smiley as well for like a Nick Madrigal. But I think they're, they're, they're too high on Madrigal and he's too good of a prospect. Uh, so I said, I don't think that's a good idea. And then he, he brought up Clint Frazier, uh, which Stanton got hurt uh, last night. So it looks like Frazier's going to be up um, probably today. So he was thinking the same trade just for Frazier and maybe Miguel Andujar, uh, which is also a good, a good offer. Uh, Cueto really helped his trade stock last night. Uh, and August 31st is the deadline. So, I mean, he has a couple more starts, and we'll see if anybody wants it. Um, we made a trade today. We got Luis Basabe, a guy that when they de when the White Sox designated him for assignment, um, that was, I mean, he's their, he was their ninth prospect, best prospect. I think he had... He's actually like the 11th now. Uh, he's going to be 18th best prospect for us. They just announced that. As a guy, and we got him for cash considerations, guys. Cash considerations. Two years ago, Nationals Park, he had an absolute bomb to center field off of Hunter Green, which is a top prospect for the uh, Reds. 102 miles per hour, he turned on it to center field. The guy's, the, he's a switch hitter. He's 23 years old. He's had some injury problems, but he's a project. And Farhan loves that, and I love I love what he's doing right now. We got Jordan Humphreys last week. He's our 26th best prospect now for nothing. I mean, for Billy Hamilton, and that's pretty much nothing. A guy that we didn't need, hasn't played for us, and is like 0 for 6 so far with the Mets. I mean, we're getting these guys. We're building up our, our farm system for nothing. And uh, to add these two guys in the middle of the year is an amazing job by them. I was really excited to see Luis Pasabe uh, trade this morning. One of the guys that I've I've seen with the White Sox, and I thought he was going to be one of their their players for the White Sox. White Sox have a really, really, really deep uh, farm system that's that's coming up right now. Luis Robert, uh, Kopech, and Madrigal, and uh, Jimenez. And now I thought he would be the next guy up, and he they kind of gave up on him, and we'll we'll take him in. Uh, he's he's a really really good ball player. Like I said, switch hitting, twenty three years old. Uh, got this. Got everything. He's got a really, 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 really good arm. Got power. Got some speed. So I mean, even if he doesn't work out, we didn't we didn't give up anything but cash. So great, great move this morning. Uh, really good news before I hopped on right now is uh, Jarlin Garcia is going to be in the in the bullpen. Uh, one of the guys that I've been talking about the last three or four times on these on these videos. I'm really excited to see what he does tonight, or if he if he you know he's in the bullpen, so he probably is going to pitch today or the next couple of days. But he's got really good stuff. He gets lefties and righties out, which is really important with the new rule. Um, and then Trevor Cahill, he added to the taxi squad, but <clears throat> he's pretty much going to be on the, the – he's probably going to make the next start for some margin spot. Um, I think it's Wednesday. So really exciting stuff. We're getting guys healthy again. 
Um, we're making a little side trade, little trades for the future. Really, really exciting stuff. We're getting wins against Clayton Kershaw. Uh, so, I mean, hopefully we can keep this momentum going. And if we can get two out of three from the Dodgers and the two wins go against Kershaw and Bueller, man, that's that's impressive stuff. And we go to eight and nine. So, seven and nine right now. Uh, not where we want to be, but eight and nine after today would be awesome. Okay, so uh, that's that's exciting stuff. Uh, and then Avellino, uh, Avital, Avellino, the guy we got in the McCutcheon trade, uh, got designated for assignment. He hasn't really panned out um, for us, which is fine. Um, not every trade works, and he wasn't really a, a guy we thought was going to be a superstar, but maybe a little piece. We saw him last year a little bit. He's got the speed. He's got really good defense, but his, his bat hasn't been hasn't been there. So, I mean, best of luck to him. Maybe he comes back uh, if he if he clears waivers and whatever. Um, and the one last thing I was going to talk about yesterday, and I forgot to talk about it, was uh, Tyler Beatty. It's it's really a, really a tough year for him to have the Tommy John surgery. Um, because I mean, last year we hit, you got a bunch of innings, a bunch of innings and a lot of, a lot of good time to figure things out, but we're still high on that guy. He's got really good stuff. And hopefully this, after this surgery and recovery, he could be the guy that could be the fourth, third starter for us. Um, I it just, it's just really, it's, it's, un, it's unfortunate that he couldn't get this year in, especially this quick little year. We could really use him, uh, as the four or five guy and just get him innings. Give him some innings, just like Logan Webb's getting this year, and uh, some some experience against these major league hitters. But it, it's unfortunate; it really is. And he's one of those guys that we drafted high out of Vandy, and and uh, I, re I really like his stuff. But you know, he he's had a tough tough couple years with us, um, a little high ERA. But I thought this would be a great year for him. Unfortunate. Oh well, we'll keep positive. I want to end on a positive. Let's get a win tonight. Score early again. Like I said, my player of the game is Crawford. Um, but, man, keep keep swinging it, Yaz. Keep swinging it, Solano. Keep swinging it, Longo. Pablo, get a hold of one today at the DH. Um, Heineman, don't, do, don't have a catcher's interference. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I got. That was a fun one today. Hope we have another fun one tomorrow. Let's get a win. Let's beat LA. Let's win the series. And uh, go Giants!